know, higher energies or lower energies. I don't feel that anywhere. People say, does it have good energy? I said, everything's got good energy to me. I haven't, I haven't encountered bad energy since this a certain point. It's just all good. Right. But, but that's a helpful step. The other thing is, it's just like we tell children. We, we always tell children, find good role models. I think we learn from the Course that, that basically behavior doesn't teach. We really don't learn from the behavior of others. It's a projection. We're, we're right. just seeing the projection of our own thoughts and to think that we can get role modeling behavior from somebody and suddenly that's going to shape our own thoughts oh, and behavior. Yeah. I mean, I, I went to a group of 30 psychotherapists one time in St. Louis and they asked me about this time when, when this student of mine left her, her two children with me. They were like seven and nine or something, or five and nine. And they left me with these children for a whole week. Oh, yeah. And, and the children were fishing for a whole week to found my boundaries, you know, to find like what they could get away with. We all did that when we were with the substitute teachers. You push the boundaries. You just see what you can, how far. They couldn't find boundaries in an entire week. And they, the children got so giddy and happy around me that at one point in the middle of the week, of course, like the, the parents left me money for like, for food, and, and I would say every night, where should we go for dinner? McDonald's! So Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday <laughs> night, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night. And, and the psychotherapists were all going, ooh. Oh. And then at some point during the week, we were all, so, they took, rearranged the furniture in the living room and made like forts and we were all playing. We just played basically all week. We just had a ball. And, and in the middle of it, they were so giddy and so happy and couldn't find any boundaries. That's why they were so giddy. That the, the little girl, she was like about nine years old, she went Whoosh! and she spit. And I had a beard at the time. So I'm watching the goober uh, fly through the air like in slow motion and it landed in the beard. Actually, it was a small beard. It landed here. And then she just did like most kids. She just looked at me to see if there would be a negative a reaction, another boundary testing thing. And when I just smiled and laughed, it was a spit fight, the, 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 oh, the boy. God. And then we just had a, sp a spit bath, and then we cleaned ourselves up. Well, I'm telling this to 30 psychotherapists in St. Louis, and they're just going, Oh, David, this is the worst role modeling that we've ever heard. And this, and I said, Oh, he, you're all Course in Miracles students. Let's get over this role modeling stuff. I said, I said, we teach by attitude. I was teaching the atonement by my attitude of complete non-judgment and total acceptance. And they were feeling that we were one self. I am one self united with my Creator. And they were feeling that vibe that there was no boundary to cross. And, and that it was all done in a beautiful, safe way and a very loving way. In fact, they were, when the parents came back, they didn't want to let the parents in the house. They really <laughs> said, no, no, let's, uh, let's continue on. We like Uncle David. We like, right. It's, it's a, but, but I said, we don't, once we learn, it's not the behavior that teaches, it's the attitude. So, but let's take the role modeling thing. If you find, like when you met Ellie and you had that holy encounter, it was impactful for you. It, it, you stayed in your memory. It was a very significant thing. Excellent. And that's one of the reasons why you probably were drawn to come here. It was, it was a good reason. Why is anybody drawn to go anywhere except they feel a really good vibe? You know, they feel like... That's someone that I trust. That's someone that I feel good about. I, that's someone who's not judging me. And then, that's just a step though, because ultimately, you know, you can go to many places and, and then you end up trying to follow people around and everything and you see that that's not going to work either. But what it does is, if, if you find people that are, have integrity, that seem consistent, that are consistently happy and joyful and loving, then it would be good to listen and pay attention to what those people are saying, just as a stepping stone. Because in the ultimate sense, you're going to have to let go of those symbols too, you know, and right. listen to that voice within, and trust that voice for everything. But that's what we tell people: is like, sure. go ahead. It's it's not specialness to to go follow somebody or to go to somebody that you like and respect. That's almost like common sense. Well, the course says you use around. your brother all the time. Yeah. You know? Yeah. He says, I, I want to be seen as an elder, he says, I can be used as an elder brother, meaning that I know that my atonement is complete. Yeah. 
and so we use elder brothers. I mean, the thing for me is that I, I've had an experience that my brother is myself. So it doesn't really matter where in time the brother thinks that they are. I know it's me spread out in time. And if you have a brother that is a late timer, you know, who has had the atonement principle working, then sure, you, you want to glean what it is that, you know, their mind has undergone this change that you, that you want. And it was like, even if you think you haven't had the experience or you, you know, you're never going to get it or whatever, like I always just remind people, I mean, all you have to do is look at your brother. Look how much your dream has changed, you know? Your dream a moment ago did not include brothers telling you you're perfect as God created you. Time is over. We're home in heaven. So even if you personally don't feel like, oh God, you know, I'm not having the experience or whatever, the fact is, it's happening. It's happening. Your dream has changed. Look, you're out picturing. This is your out picturing. This is your mind. Your mind has changed. <laughs> right? You have a reflection in your mind that is a bright reflection, a light reflection. That is you. That is you. You know. Okay. Yeah. That's, yeah, it's very empowering when you look at it that way. Yeah. And it, I think all. And your experience too. will be sure to follow that. I mean, you can't, yeah. you can't stay asleep forever. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> if you see too that, that the only problem there is is we call it the authority problem which is to believe that you can offer yourself or make yourself be any way you want to be, which is what, you know, all these makeovers and reinventing yourself and all the stuff that you see on TV and everything. It's all about trying to reinvent yourself as if you ever had the power in the first place <laughs> right. to do it. And so when people come and they come closer <coughs> and closer and closer in, you bet the authority problem will rear its head. You bet control issues will come up. <laughs> you better believe. I mean, like